What's up guys? I thought I'd do a video today about how I carry my pens around with me. Um, in general, I don't wear like button-down shirts with uh, breast pockets or anything. Um, and usually like a lot of people on fountain pen forums and stuff, uh, that's their main way of carrying around fountain pens. Uh, for me, it's not very practical. Uh, I, I know that people kind of look down on carrying pens in uh, pants pockets. Um, but honestly, that's really the only way I can carry pens around. Um, so, in general, I don't carry my pens just loose in the pocket, just because I have other things in my pockets, like keys or knives or lighters or whatever, uh, and if I can help it, I'd rather not really get my pens super scratched up. Um, most of my pens are user pens, I don't mind if they get micro scratches and stuff, but I don't want to get re really deep gouges or anything out of the uh, resin or plastic or whatever. Um, really the only time I car carry a pen just alone in pocket is either if I know the pen is going to be completely empty, oops, sorry, uh, or I think, I guess my Lamy 2000 with the Macrolon, um, I, I will carry loose in pocket even with other things just because that finish holds up relatively well, the material holds up relatively well to scratches, uh, so I don't really mind as much, but, you know, for the most part I will use pen pouches or pen cases. Uh, I specifically have four right now that I've gotten in the past few months. <clears throat> uh, first up here, I have a very basic uh, pen sleeve, I suppose you could call it. Uh, this one is made by Ashton. I got this from uh, you know the Goulet Pen Company. Um, and it basically just holds one pen. Uh, you can see here I have my Pelkin M600. You know This is my daily use, daily carry pen. Uh, and it's a perfect fit in this sleeve. Uh, these sleeves run for around $12, I think, uh, plus shipping and handling, obviously. They're made out of pretty thick leather, you can see here. Uh, not really sure exactly how thick, maybe 2 to 3 millimeters in thickness. Um, but the leather itself is still actually quite soft and quite pliable, uh, which is really nice. Um, I had bought, like two of the different colors. I had bought a darker color and it kind of felt like the leather was a little thinner uh, so I'm not sure whether it's just like a different type of leather or something. Inside is basically uh, raw unfinished leather uh, so it won't really scratch up your pens but I am a little concerned about maybe if the leather inside gets dirty. Uh, this kind of unfinished leather will kind of have things embed into it and it may, you know, if you have, if you get dirt or something in there it may scratch up your pen as you uh, put it in or pull it out of the sleeve very often um, but because the leather is so thick uh, and it has really like thick seams and edges around it um, it's very resistant to falls you know I've, I've actually dropped this with my pen in it multiple times uh, and if it hits anywhere along this edge or even along here you won't really have any problems you won't really crack your pens or anything uh, from a reasonable height uh, and you know, I mean honestly even if you drop it like this like usually the leather will actually just kind of mush down and protect the cap as well. Um, it holds relatively large pens uh, because it is leather and has really strong seams you can get thicker pens into here. Um, you know obviously the M600 really isn't the thickest pen in the world. Um, I don't think it'll hold a 149. You know, unfortunately I don't have a 149 that I can try it with. Uh, but you know here I have a 146 which is slightly thicker than the M600 and it does fit into this case. Uh, it's a little tight, it's a little snug, but because it's leather over time it can stretch out and you can accompany thicker pens. Uh, definitely pens that have uh, stranger shapes like, uh, what was it? One of the Omos pens I think that's like completely triangular uh, or maybe some of the really thick uh, Delta Dolce Vitas, um, they're pr oversized pens, they're probably not going to fit in this slip. But in general, I don't carry those. I don't even own those types of pens. Uh, so all the pens that I own will actually fit. Uh, the 146 is probably my thickest pen along with... Uh, if I get it out... Let's see. Probably like the Twisby VAC 700, you know, at this portion here where the cap band is. Uh, that's actually quite thick and... You can see here, like I said, it does fit. It is a little tight. Uh, you know, it. You know, you, you actually see it like kind of expanding the leather as it goes into there. Uh, and you can also see um, it accompanies quite long pen, like pretty long pens as well. Uh, with the M600, it completely 
envelopes the pen with the VAC 700. It uh, just kind of peeks out a little bit. You know, you can still see it with no major issues. And, you know, comparing the size of the two pens here, you can see that the VAC 700 is quite longer than the Pelican M600. So, this is what I carry very often. I do highly recommend these cases. Uh, the leather quality is very nice. It's very soft and supple. And, um, relatively cheap, to be honest. You know, for $12, it's, I mean, yeah, it's a piece of leather, but it'll basically be only be, be the only pen case you need if you only carry one pen of a moderate size. So, let's just put that away. Uh, next up, I have a two pen case. Uh, it's a pretty cheap two pen case, as you can see. You know, it's not like I, you know, the seller I got, the, actually, the next three cases I got from the same seller off of eBay. Uh, and I believe that the source for these pouches is the same as like the new leather pouches that Anderson Pens started carrying uh, a few months ago. Uh, and I think they're all like made in India or something. Um, the quality isn't too bad, you know, they call it genuine leather, I don't doubt it, you know, it's quite soft leather, leather, uh, but it's probably like either a bonded leather, or especially in areas like here, the back, there's probably some sort of cardboard in here that gives it a nice stiffness to it, um, so it's not 100% leather. Uh, this case itself is around $20, it holds two pens, and you can see it can actually hold very, very thick pens in there, um, probably won't be able to tell that easily. Let's get a light over here. You can see here it's quite wide. Uh, it's kind of funny because I have two relatively thin pens in here. Uh, right now I have a uh, Waterman 92 and then a Parker 51 Aerometric. Um, I will carry this pen in pocket most of the time because of how thin and narrow it is. Uh, basically there's such little material, material in it that if you were to just put two pens into it, uh, you could just carry it easily into your pocket. It'll protect your pens from scratches. Uh, this is sewn down all the way so that uh, the two pens are separate and they won't scratch along each other. And then it'll just fit into the pocket like that. And then if I want to, I can always flip the lid open, uh, flip the cover open, put this into my pocket, uh, and have these two holes exposed so that I can just push the pens from the bottom up like this and then pull my pen out of my pocket and I don't have to go through the hassle of actually taking out the case and pulling out the pen one at a time. Uh, this case, these sleeves were sized to fit uh, Mont Blanc 149s. Um, like I said, I don't have one, I can't really compare. But the width of these is like, it's quite wide. I'm, I'm sure there's no problems with uh, carrying a 149 in here. And you can actually, oops, there goes that pen case. Good thing it's in the pen case. Um, and you can see here with the M600, my M600 completely drops into the pen case with probably almost an inch left. So uh, even longer pens like the 149, you'll have no problems with it. And um, this does hold it quite tightly. You're really only supposed to bring this tongue down all the way here. And you can see that you still have even more space, you know, maybe another half inch up here that the flap flaps over. Uh, obviously, with longer pens, you can just bring the tongue higher up. Although, uh, like, I don't really think you're going to have a pen that's that long. Uh, for me, all my pens will fit completely in the sleeve. So I pull the tongue all the way down so it's nice and tight. And I don't have excess bulk in my pocket. And I mean, like I said, for twenty dollars, it's a good, it's a good fit. It's relatively lightweight. Uh, you know, for me, my main goal of having the pouches is to protect my pen pens from scratching. So next up, like I said, from the same seller I got off eBay. It's you know, this is a four pen case. Um, in here, definitely like before with the two pen case, the tongue probably didn't have any sort of stiffening material, but this one actually does. It's like quite stiff along the flap as well as the back, um, which is nice, you know, the stiffeners help in that it pr helps to protect the pen more than just the plain soft leather, uh, but at the same time, it does make it more difficult to carry in pocket, and uh, this four pen case I definitely do not carry in my pocket. This is solely meant to be put into my bag. Um, I mainly carry messenger style bags, and most bags do have organization sleeves for pens. Uh, not all of them are cut for fountain pens, they're cut more for thinner pens, 
like uh, you know rollerballs, ball points, and stuff like that. Uh, and honestly, I don't really like having the pen alone in just the pen sleeves in the bags because generally those sleeves are probably in a messenger style bag. They are on the outside of the bag with the flap covering it, and that's the only thing that protects it. Uh, and when you have a bag like that and it gets thrown around, there is a good chance that you will crush the pen and it may crack or something. Uh, so with my nicer pens, I do prefer to carry in a pouch inside the main compartment of the pen. And then the pouch protects it from really getting scraped up along anything else that's in the bag. Uh, and it also keeps the pens upright so they don't just drop down to the bottom of the bag and end up getting crushed by something heavy. Uh, like I said, I carried this in my bag. Uh, currently, I have four pens in here. I will switch out pens, obviously, depending on what I want to carry. Um, but these are basically like my backup pens. Um, you know, I have a 78 G in here with Base State Blue. I have a Platinum Preppy eyedropper filled with Base State Blue with the rollerball attachment on the tip. Uh, I do like to carry this just because, you know, as much as I like fountain pens, I do have to admit there are times when you can't really use a fountain pen. Uh, let's see, you end up going somewhere where you need to write on carbon paper. Uh, I'm not going to really put a lot of pressure on my gold nib pens to write on carbon paper. Uh, or, you know, if I need to have let someone borrow a pen, um, I'll let them borrow this one if I don't happen to have another ballpoint handy. Um, just because I'm not going to just go and loan out my fountain pens to people who don't know how to use them. Uh, then, you know, I have my 146 that I pulled out before with... Um, oh, whew, almost dropped it. With a... Diamine Red Dragon, uh, you know, basically I use this as a markup pen because it is a red ink, a dark red ink, but still a red ink nonetheless, and it's a medium nib, so write large, big red letters, it stands out. And then, funny story here, I actually keep uh, my Twisby Mini in here, and it's empty, uh, because the other day at work, actually, um, I had decided I was going to refill my M600. And so I basically worked the piston and then basically kind of discovered that it was a super, super tight moving piston. Uh, you know, like this is nice and easy, obviously it's lubricated. And Pelicans are known to have very smooth piston, like operating pistons. Um, but in this case, it was kind of getting stuck and I was a little worried that I would do damage to the, the rubber seals along the piston here. Um, or maybe even like accidentally get ink sucked into the back behind the piston uh, and with the m600 you can't just unscrew the piston assembly uh, it's friction fit in there so you kind of have to like pop it out and you can only do that so many times before the piston no longer really fits snug into there uh, you know it's not like the m800 or the m1000 where it's a brass threaded rod um a brass threaded piece that you can just unscrew and screw back in um one of the biggest dings for me for the m600 anyway for maintenance uh so i basically i couldn't use the pen uh, I flushed it out with water, it was still kind of getting stuck, and obviously that meant I just had to grease up the piston with a silicone lubricant, which I didn't have any handy at work, obviously. Uh, and that day, I basically just, I borrowed one of my coworkers' fountain pens instead, uh, just because I couldn't fill my M600 up with ink again. And take this as a reminder to upkeep your pens properly. Um, with that pen, I've been using 54th Massachusetts by Noodlers, which is a bulletproof ink in it. Uh, for the past four months. Um, basically, after I got that ink, I de designated that as my everyday ink in my everyday pen, uh, and I refilled it, obviously, dozens of times because I use it as a daily writer, and I never flushed it once. Um, and, you know, people always say, you know, with Noodler's Bulletproof inks, it's not so bad. It does require a little more pen, pen maintenance, uh, but I just honestly, I just got lazy and I forgot. Uh, and fortunately, it was with the Pelican where I could unscrew the nib and feed section out, and clean it properly. You know, if it had been like a Mont Blanc or something where I wouldn't necessarily want to open it without sending it to the factory, it would have been like a $80 repair bill or whatever. Uh, so, you know, now I just, I keep um, a pen empty. You know, the Twisby Mini happened to be a pen that I don't really use that often anymore. Uh, and the reason why I keep it empty is basically at work, I keep a bottle of Noodler's 54th Massachusetts. And if anything happens to my M600 at work, I can always fill this up with the same color that I use on a daily basis and write with it, you know, versus the other pens that are in here already have different colors in there. And I'm not necessarily going to use uh, Bay State Blue when at work just because, it, it, you know, using bright colors is kind of frowned upon uh, when you're writing up official documents. Uh, generally, they prefer black ink 
and I, the reason why I like uh, 54th Mass is it's a v pretty dark ink, but at the same time, it's uh, it still has some character to it, like a nice murky blue to it. Man, I'm just dropping everything today. So yeah, that's why I use that at work. Anyway, kind of a digression, but again, uh, because this pouch came from the same manufacturer as the uh, the two pen pouch that I threw over in that corner. Um, this will also fit and was also sized for Montblanc 149s and thicker pens. Uh, although I have noticed that actually um, the two middle sleeves are the ones that are thickest and can fit the pens easily. Uh, you know, you can see here that the 146 basically can drop out of that middle sleeve, uh, but the side sleeves are a little tighter. You can see that there's, it's actually like deforming the leather as you get pushed in there, and I can't really comfortably fit the clip in there. I mean, I, yeah, I guess I, I can move the clip towards the end, like fit it in there, but it is a tighter fit. So uh, I don't think 149s will fit in the side two sleeves, but in the middle, there should be no problems. So let's just put those back in the pouch. Doot. And then finally, what I had dropped on the floor before um, is this. Now, you probably won't be able to see it. I'm probably gonna. Let's see. Move this. Oh. Move this tripod up a little bit so you can see it a little better. Uh, like so. This is my main pen storage. Um, originally, I had planned on putting my pens into like a used cigar box or whatever, a wooden box. Didn't seem really elegant. I didn't really get the finger sleeve, uh, the finger sleeve foam to really uh, protect the pens that much from scratching and rattling around inside any old box. Um, so I decided to get this. Uh, oh, and speaking of which, the first, you know, the two pen sleeve was around twenty dollars. This four pen was around twenty five dollars. This is thirty five dollars uh, plus another five dollars for shipping. So total, I paid forty dollars for it. As you see, it's kind of it's it's also another genuine leather case. I don't really care. I mean, it looks pretty nice. It's a nice like, book style with the zipper that goes all the way around. And then in here, you can see it has like the the nice velvet, uh, velvet um, what's it called? Fabric on it to prevent it from scratching your pens. And you can see it's two rows. Uh, you know, obviously there's a flap here that protects both halves of this case. And it has, the what I consider really nice is per pen sleeve, it actually has two elastic openings for you to slide the pens in so this will actually keep the pens separated from each other uh, now with some of the less expensive pen cases that you may get from like overseas um, they generally only have one sleeve that's like one strip of elastics that's sewn down the middle and what will happen is your pens will actually probably move around in the case and contact each other and scratch each other uh, not a super concern for me but it, it's a nice attention to detail regardless uh, and these are actually spaced well enough for like if you can see here uh, when I have the pens in there They're actually kept apart with a good amount of distance in between uh, Versus some of the other ones to where they're just clamped right next to each other, which I don't really like uh, This pen case will hold 24 pens. I believe Yes, I kind of figured I would not really own more than 24 pens at a time uh, That I would have to put into storage uh, as you can see here, it, it's kind of filling up, but to be fair, a lot of pens on this side are quite cheap. You know, I even have the, uh, what's it called? The, uh, the brush pen that, um, Noodler's packages with their large, uh, Florence bottles. Um, I think they're, what's the brand? I think they're Kuretake's branded, um, brush pens. I just threw it in there because I had nowhere else to put it. And then you can also see here I have four preppies, uh, filled with a variety of different colors. Uh, I also have my three nip creepers in here. Uh, so, you know, this side and the Lamy Safaris. Uh, this side is cheap pens that I would ha not have any issues just pulling out and throwing into my pen drawer uh, and floating them in there uh, if I got more nice pens that I really wanted to keep in better condition. And, you know, over here I have um, my nicer pens, my M650, uh, Custom 74 Demo, Lamy 2000, a new 78G, Parker 21, and the uh, VAC 700. So this is my biggest main pen storage, um, and for the price, it's pretty good. You know, y you could get the cheaper ones from eBay overseas, and I mean, for a case this size to that holds 24 pens, uh, you're still gonna end up paying 
probably at least $20. Uh, and like I said, the attention to details of having the two rows of elastic and having good distance in between the elastic, uh, I think is worth the extra money. Especially if you're a collector and you want to keep your pens as scratch free as possible. Uh, although honestly, if you really want to collect the pens, you're probably better off keeping them in their individual boxes. But I mean, you know, who has the space for that these days? You know, some people who really are into fountain pens and have really large collections. I know they have dedicated rooms to their fountain pens, and they have like glass displays where they display like their, their all their writer edition Mont Blancs and whatever. Uh, I don't have that. This works for me now. I still have plenty of space for expansion. Uh, even if I load up all my pens in there, although obviously, you know, there are several pens that I do keep in the smaller pouches because I do use them on a regular basis. And from here, I can just pull the pens out from storage and then put them back into the individual pouches. Uh, in terms of other pen cases I was looking at, uh, I was thinking about getting some of the Pelican cases. Uh, I know they have like a two pen case and a three pen case. But they're kind of pricey. I think they range in like you get them street price forty to sixty dollars. Um, the reason why I wanted to get the Pelican pen cases is I do really like Pelicans, uh, so it would kind of go along with the pens that I carry. But I did hear issue had um, hear that people had issues fitting larger pens in them, and that if you wanted it like with the two pen pouch, it was kind of a bit of a squeeze to get even two M600s in there, uh, and they definitely really wouldn't fit M800s and M1000s. Not that I have any of those pens, but I do have thicker pens that I would probably want to put into the case. Um, I was also looking into the Franklin Kristoff pen boxes and pen cases and pen envelopes, uh, and they seem really nice actually, uh, and they seem like they protect, protect the pens really well, um, but honestly, you know, originally I had thought maybe I would either get one of the one pen uh, classic case from Franklin Kristoff or their two pen case and use it for pocket carry but after looking at the images it's actually like a nylon sleeve inside with a leather box over it so I feel like for a pocket carry it would be too thick and too bulky and heavy uh, so you know I just went ahead with uh, you know these cases um, in general when it's in my pockets I, even though I work in like a manufacturing company um, I am pretty careful about what I lean my pants against and stuff, so I don't crush my pens. So I don't really need that impact protection that those pen cases provide. Uh, although I am thinking that maybe I will get one of their envelopes or one of their three or four pen box uh, cases uh, to use in my bag. Because in my bag, you know, this can only protect the pens so much. It is relatively soft. It does bend. Um, so... I, you know, it would be more comfortable for me to get one of those heftier, thicker boxes for bag carry, but uh, for now, you know, I keep this in one of the organization pouches on the side of the bag, so it hasn't really been an issue yet. So yeah, that's how I store my pens. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you guys found this video interesting, uh, and l like I said, as a reminder, make sure you, you know, maintain your pens regularly, especially if you use an ink that requires more maintenance like any of the noodlers bulletproof inks and stuff so yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching